Hello everyone, my name is Pong number 13 of room 352 in the EPTS program in Patuman Demonstration School. And today I will be reviewing these books which are What If, Russian Revolution, Dunkirk, First Man, and Iris the Third Looking Glass. I will be talking about this plot where we recommend it to and use a grading system of 10, which are is it engaging, is it fun, is it easy to understand, and is the price reasonable? which are all 0 to 2 points, each depending on how much it is per category, in my opinion. What If is a book about answering ridiculous or stupid questions with scientific facts. This was written by Randall Munro, an ex-NASA scientist who quit NASA to become an internet cartoonist. There are 12 wording questions and 39 chapters in total. Examples of, of exciting chapters are how many guns do you need to fly like a jetpack? The answer is 25 to 300 automatic classic of AK-47 per person. Or if you build a pod with uh, the Gush Shippon F-630, it can launch a person over a mountain in the Himalayas, but it will need very good cooling. Or the another exciting question is, how many watts or kilowatts does Yoda from the original Star Wars produce? The answer is um, less than I expected, which is 19.2 kilowatts, which is uh, 30 baht per hour. Example of boring questions, so what happens if we throw a baseball at 90% of the speed of light? The answer is, um, it will blow up an entire city. It's quite funny too. And another example of funny question is, is it possible to brew tea with only stirring it with a spoon? The answer is no, because all the tea will leak out onto the table you're drinking it on, before you, it even boils. The questions which are very worrying in the author's mind is, is it possible to not to get injured from getting stabbed? Or how many nuclear bombs does it take to blow up the US? Or how many calories does a human have? I personally think What If is a fun and educational book that you can read anytime, although it's highly recommended to people of all ages, especially people who like science fact. Although some people have difficulty with the word which the book will try to explain, although it's an excellent book, I will give this book a 9 out of 10. Thank you. The second book I will be reviewing is The Russian Revolution, a short story. It's a book about the Russian Revolution starting from Bloody Sunday to the victory of the Communist Party in the Russian Civil War. This book is, I would say, it's pretty good for people who are interested, although out of it is quite boring sometimes. And people who are not interested in it may not find that it is a good book. Well, personally, uh, a person who listens to Russian choir every day, I think it's a okay-ish book. I would, I would give this book a 6 out of 10. First Man is a biography about Neil Armstrong with wonderful pictures as seen here and start with New Armstrong ancestors moving from Great Britain to the United States. New Armstrong was born in 1930 and finished university in 1970, where shortly after married his first wife. In his first assignment with NASA, he would be the backup commander for Gemini 5 and would only go to space in Gemini 8. Later in the Apollo program, he was assigned as the main commander of Apollo 11, where he set a famous quote, 
One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The book does a great job of getting the reader to feel suspense, even though we already know the outcome, which that's what I feel personally. It later continue about the outcome of Polly Evan, which knew himself got to visit the USSR during the Cold War, which is which is a bit worrying since you know he just made the other country lose a space race. And my favorite part is that Buzz Aldrin punched a conspiracy theorist and was sued by that conspiracy theorist. Although Buzz Aldrin did win in that case. During the time before his death, Neil Armstrong received so many fan mails that he needed to hire another man to just acknowledge the mails for him. I would actually recommend these books to people who are interested in space flight, space flight history, Cold War history, the Apollo program, the Gemini program, or Neil Armstrong personal history. I would like to give this book an 8 out of 10. Dunkirk is a book about a group of men in Dunkirk, France, 1939, trying to escape the German Blitzkrieg. The story about the process of shooting the Dunkirk movie. During 1938 to 1939, the colony of most of the major Allied country is experiencing economic depression from the last world war, and youth are currently the most important generation. In England, most children are working hard to support their families and spend their allowance in movies and fashion. In Germany, most children are taught in a specialized program that are brainwashing children into Nazis. In the USA, there was a Great Depression. In 1939, France and England declared war on Germany. The Wehrmacht quickly took control of Rhineland using mass duke raids, Blitzkrieg, and the invasion of neutral countries. The Allies were pushed back until there were only one large port left for evacuation, and that was Dunkirk. Dunkirk at first was chaotic, friendly fire, almost capsizing ship, and Stuka raids, and Messerschmitt and Fokkers strafing the ground. The chaos almost stopped when a naval officer arrived at Dunkirk, where he arranged and ordered the men there to have a planned evacuation. The RAF couldn't help much because the ground troops were shooting at every plane they can see because they do not know how to identify each plane even though they were trained to do so. One of the RAF pilots who landed on the beach was yelled at by a couple soldiers for not providing support even though they did. So they used that RAF officer or pilot as a person to identify aircraft for them. After returning to England, the soldiers were well received, getting free coffee, meals, newspaper, and more. Later, after welcoming everybody, Winston Churchill gave a speech that they will go back to France and invade Germany, as the quote of, we will fight on the beaches, said in some movies including Dunkirk. In 2019, Christopher Nolan directed a film Dunkirk depicting several young soldiers' adventures in Dunkirk. When directing, Christopher Nolan has almost run out of people and clothes for some of his shots. The film also used real RF Spitfires which was very expensive and rare so cr crashing would use a, a lot of a budget or all of the budget. Recruiting the warship was also hard because people had to stand on them and they had to be one-on-one -on -one accurate. In conclusion, I would recommend this book for anyone who is 13 or above for obvious reason, PG. I would recommend this book for people who like World War II or history in general. I would give this book a 9 out of 10 as far as that sometimes it's boring but that's normal for a history book. Iris 
Through the Looking Glass. Iris Through the Looking Glass is a fan fiction about SCP-105 and a character named Redacted Kun. Redacted Kun gets sent to a SCP Foundation facility and met 105, which is linked down below, and somehow ended up in a jail cell. They became friends after on and after adventures with a few other SCPs also linked down below, couldn't find his way back to where his origin is. And yes, that's the entire book. It's quite short and sometimes um boring for some people, but for, for me and people who are interested in SCP, there aren't many books that are SCP related. I would give this book a 5 out of 10. I would really recommend this to SCP fans. Thank you everyone for watching my video. This video is a part of a project for the EPTS program in M2 as for the library course. Thank you and goodbye.